G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. <clears throat> well this will be part two of our Massey Ferguson 135 restoration and what I've chosen to do is because it had a little miss with it running, sometimes you could turn the bleeder out on the pump and, and the miss would go out so I thought it was air related and <clears throat> the fuel lines going from the tank around to the lift pump or rubber too so but look we have the chance while it's together to do a compression test so I'll swing you over to it to the engine I'll show you what we're up to and how we've got to where we are um, I've taken the tank off already um, look I've been on the job half an hour maybe and I'll show you what's involved and we'll follow through just as a compression test for the first video um, the firing order on this engine is one, two, three. Number one's the one at the front near the fan. And so, yeah, look, we'll just get the injectors out and we'll, um, we'll do a compression test. I have a, a cheap eBay diesel compression tester set that I haven't used it yet. So <laughs> let's hope it's a good one and it'll do the job for us. So stay tuned. I'll get you, I'll get you focused in on the engine. Right, you can see the boat in the background, but... Um, that's, <laughs> that's as good a background as any. Now, we've taken the tank off. There's a return rail along here. We've taken that off. And it has little screws with, uh, they have a copper washer. Actually, they actually originally had an aluminium washer, but these ones have a copper washer each side of the banjo. And that takes any fuel leakage back through, through this little pipe here. And then that goes back and returns into the tank. So I've taken that fuel rail off. I've loosened the injector lines off. Now a 5.8 spanner does that. And on this engine, this back one, a three quarter spanner fits it. So there's actually a little bit of solder down the bottom there, or braze I would say. So maybe some reason why the mist was there. Perhaps it's not getting the full run of fuel it needs. But this injector line, is different so we'll probably put a set on they're only cheap nowadays the aftermarket ones so I've also loosened the injector nuts off now there's three oh, they're half inch and there's a small nut at the front and so you can get it at the back there's a long nut at the back and you don't need to undo the manifold with that but look later on you may notice the manifold missing only because it'll be so it's easy to film for us and we have to replace this one anyway so we'll just see how we go um, I'll go and get a bar and we'll leave with these injectors out right we've gone and got a bar well that was an easy one and the injectors have a rubber seal to stop the moisture getting down and then they seal with a copper washer down the bottom so we'll try and keep these, well, that was easy too. We'll try and keep these in the order that they came out. Nothing out of the ordinary there. So I'll put them, I'll put them over on the bench out of the way because we have to put a battery back in here yet. To crank the engine over. Um, I'll I'll go and get the compression test kit, and we'll we'll set it up and see how we go. It's a new one to us, so there may be a bit of fiddling. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Follow along. All right, now the the compression test kit that I'm using is an S two six two six five. That's one I've bought off Sparex, but. Right off the money we have a problem. Now where the, where the injector sits down here, the way the, inject, the compression tester works is we have this piece here and this is, this bracket goes up here and there's a piece of alloy there that clips onto the bottom and down down the bottom of the hole where this injector sits 
this sits and seals around the corner. So we have to have this clamped down using the clamping nuts that were there before. But as you can see, we're hitting the tappet cover. So we have one of two ways to go here. One of them is to modify this H piece, knock a bit off there so we can get a straight run. And the other one is to drop the tappet cover off and see if there's room in there to, to let it go up that, that way further. But um, I think what I may do is, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll just take a bit of a measurement and I'll, I'll knock a little piece off here so we can get it down there and use it. And I might even radius it to, to sort of fit in these grooves here, in the, in the cutouts in the tappet cover. So I'll go and do a bit of butchery. I'll be back shortly. Okay, we're focusing on number one here. So we just make sure it's clean down the hole. modified the bracket. Let's hope it works. I've put some oil on the thread here. Now we sit this down, screw this down until it touches down the bottom. There we go, we're just starting to come up there now. So we get the original nut for this side. I'll back that off just so I can get a, like a full thread. And here's the long nut from the back. I'll just give all that a bit of a wriggle and make sure it's... Feels like it's bedding down okay. Just trying to keep it nice and even, about the same tension each way. And that does feel firm. So hopefully the alloy down the bottom is um, biting in nice and strong for us. Right, I'll put the battery back in and we'll come back in a moment. Now the battery is in, I've put this, we have this hose here, I might zoom out a little bit and there's a quick release coupler on the hose. Now the stopper is out so there's no fuel going to the injectors, the brake is on, it's ready to wind the key over. Now. Where can I get this so you can see it? Yeah. I'll shift the camera, hang on a sec. Okay, most diesel engines are around 400 um, pounds per square inch compression. Any, any ethanol over about 350, 375 will be okay. This is our 400 mark, so I'll try and hold this still so you can see it while I wind the engine over. That's settled there. That's sitting at 300 and 340. 
probably a little bit low. Let's see what the others do. Okay, we've moved the whole setup along to number two now. I'll try and get this. There's your 400 mark up there again. So we'll give them a bit of a wind. Oh, the battery terminal come loose. <laughs> I just sat it in there loosely. Kelly dog thinks we're going somewhere. Okay, we're sitting down at, look, a bit under 280 there, probably 270. So number two's down. Um, another thing you're looking for is around 10% variance at maximum. So we'll go and do number three. Okay, we're in number three. We'll release the pressure. Should be able to press this button and the pressure disappears. The gauge is a bit sticky on this one. Anyway, we'll give it a run and see. See if it'll give it a jar for us. Sitting at 4.20, oh sorry, 3.20.30, 3.30. So look, we're all over the shop. Um, yeah, this, these two are reasonably close. This fella here in the middle, well, yeah, there's not a lot going on there. Um, there's another option we can do is do a wet compression test. Now, um, because this pot's low, the... Um, because this pot's low, it can be ring wear or it can be a burnt valve or a tight valve or something like that. So what you can do at times is put a squirt of oil down there and if the compression picks up, you know it's a worn bore um, or worn rings. But if the compression stays about the same, you know it's, um, it's in the top end. So let's just do that just for the exercise. We'll put a bit of a squirt of oil down this one. Don't have to do too much. We'll, we'll pop this hollow back out. Kelly dog keeps barking when we wind the tractor over. She thinks we're going somewhere, so she's getting all excited. So we'll pop this one back in the lowest one. And the theory behind this is that the oil will help seal the rings a bit where if it's a burnt valve or something like that, the oil will have no effect at all, hardly. So I probably wouldn't do this normally. I'm just doing it to show you, really. Okay. Doesn't seem to want to release the pressure properly, this gauge near. Don't know what's going on there. I'll see if it's improved at all. See if it comes up higher than where that needle's stuck at the moment. I, I might have to release the hose yet. So 
So look at that. Just with a wet <coughs> test, Kelly, sit down, will you? Just with a wet test, we're right up on 400. So that tells us number two has got a worn bore, and it may be from that crook air cleaner hose over the other side there. Um, <coughs> that may be where the where the air, the dirty air, seems to want to go first. So anyway, I think we'll do an engine rebuild. Well, there you go. What have we learned from that? We've learned Kelly Dog here likes to bark whenever you don't wind a tractor over. But um, look, the compression was particularly down on number two, and it is down because of um, bore wear. Um, what you're looking for, most diesel engines will pop up around 400. Now, 400, it says within 10% roughly, so you know, you've got 30, 40 pound, but yeah, you want all cylinders very close. So we had one down low, <coughs> um, but I mean, by, by putting the oil down the ball, we've proven a point that it is ball wear. And um, if that was a burnt valve or something like that, um, that would have stayed around where it was. So we've also learnt that the cheap Sparex gauge doesn't release pressure after a couple of goes and it doesn't actually fit on the AD3152 engine. So um, that was just to let us know what we're dealing with. Um, I'm not sure which way we'll head yet, whether we just pop the head off for a bit of a look. We're gonna pull it out anyway, and we're gonna do the engine and the flywheel and clutch and all that. So I suppose the next video, while we're just here, is, um, pop the cylinder head off and we might have a look down the bore as, as um, the second video of the, in the series and that'll actually give us a little bit more direction as well. So there you go, compression test done. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe, have a comment, yeah, get to know each other a bit better. Um, let us know if you do something different or you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I, I, I don't think I miss any comments answering them. Um, if I do, it's a mistake. I, I, I think I'll grab them all. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and thanks for following along with the series. We'll catch you later, eh?